Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be checking out the Primaris Lieutenant from the Indominus box set for Warhammer 40,000 and we are revisiting one of our old armies, we're revisiting the Astral Knights, there was an army vlog done on those, or a hobby vlog done on those uh, back when we did that, I think in two, three years ago now and um, yeah, at the point of filming this, it was about two years ago-ish, maybe a little longer uh, but we've decided with the Indominus box that we're going to be taking our Astral Knights and we're going to be adding to them with the contents of the box. So this really follows that original uh, paint scheme. It uses a lot of the same colors, a lot of the same methods, but because this is a character I wanted to go a little bit brighter and do a couple of things a little bit different. Uh, and I think this is a good exercise in picking up an army that you maybe haven't touched in a while and relearning what you did previously and seeing if you can improve on it in any way or to try and get a consistent result if you were like me and didn't write any of the method down. So uh, this is the result and this is the test miniature or the miniature I was using from the previous batch which was one of the Dark Imperium Primaris Marines uh, to relearn what colours I used, what effects I was trying to go for back then and translating that into the new guy. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So the beginning of our uh, Primaris Lieutenant here, first off, I just want to look at how awesome he is. He's such a nice miniature, right? Um, so I've primed him black using Chaos Black Spray, so that's just the aerosol. Um, this stuff does go down a lot better than what some of you older hobbyists would know uh, as Chaos Black. <laughs> it, it does sit a lot nicer than the old formula stuff does. But our first step then is an airbrush layer and we're going to be using some lead belcher. Now, you'll have seen me do this in the army project uh, connected to the Astral Knights before. It's going to be more or less the same painting process, however, there's a couple of things I'm going to be changing, uh, but I'm sure I've probably talked about that in the intro. Anyway, we have my, my airbrush here with uh, the lead belcher thinned about two to one, and what we want to do is just give it a good top-down coat. And what you can see from that, hang on, I'll just switch there the compressor off so it doesn't annoy me. What we're trying to do here is get a majority silver coverage, but we want the shadows to retain a bit of darkness to it. So when you look at the miniature from a bottom up angle, you get all those overhangs which have retained some of the black undercoat. And that's very important moving on. So we're going to let this dry for a while because it's got a fair amount of thinner in it. I want to give it plenty of time to dry and then after that we can move on and we can apply our second airbrush coat. So the next layer that we're going to be putting down on our Astral Knight is Shining Silver from Army Painter. Again, we're putting this down through the airbrush. We've thinned it about two to one because Army Painter paints are a little bit heavier. And let me see, I need to turn my compressor back on. And the idea of this one is a completely top down because we want it to be the glint. We want it to be one of the higher shines. So if I hold the model like this and attack it head first. And what we end up with as you can see, is almost a pure steel sort of coloration on the upper parts of the miniature, which fade gently down into this darker metal and the uh, black sort of undercoat in the shadows. So you get a really heavy, a really 3D feel to the miniature. Yes, of course, it's 3D anyway, but when you're flat painting, you want everything to help assist in recognizing the shape particularly if you're at a gaming distance you know so two or three feet away or possibly more it's really highlighted here on the backpack showing the bright silver fading down into the gun metal or the, the lead belcher in this case and then down almost into black underneath the circular part of his backpack but picking up again on the uh, calf areas of his legs and then fading back again to the lead belcher basically on the bottom of the boots and that 
shows you how depth can be achieved on a miniature very, very easily. And as always, guys, if there's any of you humming and hang or sitting on the fence about trying an airbrush out, look at the quality you can get from just your basic aerosol primer and two complementary colours going over the top of it. You, you already have a sense of weight and a sense of presence about this miniature already, and you haven't even technically done anything. So, we'll let that dry, and once he's dry we can start getting into some of our other colorations. we can block out a few other things. So with the airbrushing steps all dry, we're going to move on and do a bit of base coating. Now I'm going to kind of quickly run through this base coating because we've we've seen it all before. So the first thing we're going to be doing is the joints of his armor, because there's quite a few prevalent ones, and we're going to be using some Corvus Black to paint those in. After that, we're then going to move on to one of the other colors. And if you remember the army project, or if you want to get a link back to it, I'll see if someone can link it um, to tell you the formula of uh, this metallic blue that we used on the originals, and I have one of the original here. Uh, so that's the blue, the metallic blue that we're going for, uh, which is a mixture of one of the Army Painter blues and one of the Army Painter silvers. And I can't remember which ones they are off the top of my head, but that's what we're going to be using for uh, their shoulders and their knee pads. So then after that, we're going to use some grey sear, and the grey sear is going to go down on anything that's, that needs to be white. This is why we do the shoulder pad inner first, because the outers are going to be white. Uh, so we'll be painting those, we'll be painting probably this shield. I think I might do it as a half and half, um, just maybe a half metallic blue and half the white. Uh, the tabard as well is going to go that colour too. And we'll probably pick out a few bits and pieces on here as well, maybe in the blue. In fact, we probably will do something in the blue and the white on here too. But what we'll do is just get stuck in and we'll get some of our armor joints done. I have to shake my paint up a little bit. So let's just get stuck in and start putting all these base coats down. And like I said, I don't want to show all of this because it's really sort of a, a, a plug and play mentality here. We're paint, paint by numbers mentality here. We're just going to get the colors down and then we can look at doing our shading or doing uh, highlighting. So we have that first uh, section of base coating done. I'm going to move on and do a second now. So we have three colours in this stage. We're going to be using Liberator Gold, which is a layer paint. We're going to be doing all our gold filigree and stuff. Now in the original Army project, I think we mixed a uh, thin sort of pale gold. But Liberator, I think, is going to be as close as it needs to be for that. We'll then move on to Morgast Bone, which will encompass all... Uh, the likes of the purity seal here and uh, anything else uh, some parchment areas and stuff like that and um, I think we'll probably do the skulls down the middle here and the skull in the center of the shield and then I believe after that we're going to get some Mephiston red which will be for the actual seals of the purity seals and I think that's really all it's going to to cover I don't want to put too much red on these on this miniature so yeah we're going to start with the uh, the hardest part, which is the Liberator Gold. Well, not the hardest part, the most intensive part. So we need to give it a good shake because the, the paint tends to separate in the tub when it's left uh, to sit for a while. So a good solid shake there. 
And what I'll do now is just take a small brush and just start working it into all these details that I want uh, to be gold on the miniature. And again, we'll just skip through these and just show a little bit of each of the details being done. So with all the base coating down, it's time to do one more thing and then we can move on to our main shade uh, for the whole miniature. So what I want to tackle now is the eye lenses and I've been using a bit of um, Spirit Stone Red recently in some of my other projects, uh, mostly my, my own personal ones, uh, for doing eye lenses. Now I know this stuff dries gloss, uh, which works really well. Um, but it doesn't matter because there will be matte varnishes and stuff going down anyway. However, I like this because it's a simple way uh, of applying a material to the eye lens that just gives it a little bit more interest. And it fit, it, it, it's got the consistency of a gel, so it's easier to actually place onto the lenses. And particularly these ones, I think, would be a bit of a struggle otherwise. So... Let's see if my brush is, I think my brush is too big. I'm going to use a smaller brush. If I can find where I put my smaller brush, which is always, there it is. It's usually a struggle to find the small brush. So I'm going to use something around uh, this size here. Now, it's just a case of keeping everything in focus while I do it too, helps. Just getting in there. I think that was maybe... Brush is a little stiff, so... And what we can do is once you put a drop of it down, you can pull it around a little bit. But you don't want to do too much. And that should do it. We're not looking for very bright eyes here because we, at this stage we'd be fighting with a lot of the brightness of the rest of the miniature. So we don't necessarily need the eye lenses to be one of the standout features of the marine. And looking back at the original army project as well, the, the eye lenses really aren't one of the, the standout bright features of it. Um, it's really more about the blue and the silver, and particularly on this miniature as well, it's really more about the gold. So if I bring in a member of the previous set, you know, he's a bit duller, the, the eyes are, are red, but they're just a bit quieter, and the blue and the silver is more the focal point of the miniature, and uh, using some highlighting to accentuate that a bit really brings that out. So, what we're going to be doing now is the longest step required uh, to do this. Now, we're going to be using Army Painter Quick Shade as we did with the original Army. So, this is Quick Shade Dark Tone and it is really good stuff, really useful stuff. And what we need to do is apply it with a, a fairly substantial brush. And if I move out to the side where I can actually get it, there's two ways to apply quick shade if you've never seen it done before. One, you can dip the model. You can just put the whole thing in, dip it, shake it off, and let it settle. Or you can brush it on. And I always prefer to brush 
uh, the, the quick shade on because you have far more control over the end result. You have far more control over where the material is going and how it settles. Now I know this is going to look absolutely awful while I'm applying it. And my brush is also a little not in the best of shape, but brushing this on will let me choose the shading a little bit more um, and stop any pulling pretty quick. It's also a thinner layer so the shading is a little bit tighter than it would be if you just dipped the model. I know when this was released this stuff came out everyone was like oh you can just dip your miniature in and it's great. That works but you have very little control over it and I, I don't like that lack of control. Now also you have to be aware of if you're going to go down the line of using a quick shade you need white spirit or something like that to clean your brush afterwards because this stuff is, a, is essentially a bit like a, a house paint. You know, it's a very heavy um, fluid so you've got to wash your brush off using some white spirit. Now, I said this was the longest part of painting this miniature and that's because this takes 24 hours to dry. So it works great if you're batch painting something. If you have, you know, a unit of 10 or if you're doing basically your, your Space Marine half of the Indomitus box and you're going to go quick shade, well then you can just do, you can paint everything up to this level and then you can quick shade and then just walk away for 24 hours. Now, I will also talk about, before I push on here, I will talk about um, matte varnishing after we do this because this stuff dries gloss and it's a very heavy, very bright gloss. Basically, it, it'll look like it's still wet as it is now, so everything will be shiny and it'll not look the best really unless you're looking for that sort of a finish. So when you come to matte varnishing, I have found personally that um, most aerosols will do not like this stuff. Um, I find that when I put it down over, even after 24 hours of waiting, or in some cases longer, aerosols tend to, well some aerosols, tend to make it crack and make it bubble and then you've ruined the whole thing and you have to start again. You have to strip it off and start again. So what I do in a lot of my tutorials, hopefully you've already seen, is I use matte varnish neat through an airbrush, you know, from the bottle straight through the airbrush with no thinner. And that works the best for me. That's what I find gives me the best result uh, when using quick shade. So I mean it's if you find it works better using a particular type of matte varnish aerosol, that's absolutely fine. Now what I should have done here was actually paint on the cross swords for the Astral Knights, but I'll probably end up doing that afterwards now. But that's okay. I'll probably put some transfers down as well. I just don't want them to be as shaded as the as the rest of the, the miniature. Because that was the mistake I made before. I put the transfers down, I put all my freehand work down, and then everything sort of looked a bit goopy and dirty. And I don't necessarily want it to look dirty. So we'll tackle markings and stuff once this is dry and we have a matte varnish down. Anyway, let's push on and in 24 hours we'll be able to put a matte varnish down and have a look at it. So we've left the miniature now with the, uh, the dark, uh, dark quick shade down for about 24 hours, probably a little bit more, maybe 30, 32 hours I've left it. And what this has done has given us an incredibly tough outer layer which protects everything that we've already done and uh, makes it great for transporting your miniatures. You don't have to worry just as much uh, about any um, paint chipping off, which, which is always a good thing, right? So the next step is to matte varnish all this back down. And we're going to be using uh, Citadel's Storm Shield through an airbrush. And we're not thinning it through the airbrush, we're just putting it straight through the airbrush and then immediately cleaning the airbrush to make sure it doesn't jam up on us. So <clears throat> let's see if we can show this under camera in a way that 
is interesting, so I'll find a nice glossy part. All right, let's do it. Well, there you have it. So that is the matte varnish down over our quick shade. Now it will take maybe about half an hour or so to, to fully cure because at the minute it will be quite sticky. It'll be a little tacky here and there. But in half an hour's time, this should be completely dry and ready for us to highlight. And I think we've got a very good result off this straight away. So once that's dry, we can then work on um, putting some symbols uh, some markings on and then starting to highlight up the miniature. So with the matte varnish all dry it's now time to do some markings and on his shoulder over here we're going to be applying the, the twin crossed swords of the, uh, the Astral Knights. So you can see what I've done before and um, hopefully I can replicate that without too much hassle. So we're going to use uh, some white scar for this one. I'll just bunch them over a little bit. I'm going to use some white scar to do this. And we're also going to use the white scar to highlight our grey as well. So do the edging on the shields and his shoulders and anywhere else that has that grey colour. And um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need some luck for this. Oh, I hate freehand, but hey, it's something, something I need to practice. So let's start down here, I think. Let's get the basic of that, the basic shape of that cross in first and then we can flesh out the, the shape of the swords. I'm not very good at it, I have to admit. So what I'm going to do now is try and Fill out the bottom of the sword a little. And paint in the cross guard. Roman could do a much better job at this than me. Okay, it's not the best. Um, I never get this right when it's on camera. I've really got to... Ah, damn it. Yeah, we're going to have to fix that. We'll fix that off camera, but that's the basic idea. Then we can go ahead and start to edge, highlight some of our other areas here. I'm really not happy with that. I wish we had transfers. So really all I'm looking to do here is just take a few of the, the more prominent edges of the shield and just give them a bit of a white highlight. I think the real crux of my problem is here is I've had too much coffee this morning. <laughs> had too much coffee and I'm, I'm just shaking a bit too much. So we're going to continue on with this. I'll see if I can tidy up the swords. And then when we come back we'll have a look at the other colours that we're going to be highlighting with. So with the white scar down it's kind of basic. We're not really going to go too much into it. We just want to highlight little bits here and there and I kind of fixed the swords. <laughs> I'm not overly happy with them yet but they're, they're, they're okay. So the next thing we're going to be doing is highlighting his armour and we're going to be using some Runefang steel to do that. 
So this again should be pretty straightforward. We're just looking at more um, higher points that we can play with. And there's plenty of those on this model. So for example, uh, we can probably get the top of his helmet here if I can keep it in focus. And all this is really doing is just making that glint happen again before the um, Army Painter Quick Shade and the Matte Varnish went down on it. It was all, it was very shiny. So what this is doing now is just giving us that glint back again a little bit. And just again, returning to adding some of the contours of the miniature back on. So let's have a look at the helmet here a bit more. A little bit there. I'll probably tackle that off camera. I'll tackle some other parts off camera. Um, so for example, on the inside of the arm here. And there and there. Try not to go too over the top. But we want enough to get the, the shape of the armour to stand out again. And with hard edging it's all about making sure you're consistent or as consistent as possible. The only downside to all this is because we've used an army painter quick shade, it's harder to repair uh, any issues or flaws that we make. So you kind of have to just roll with them or just take a little bit more time just to get it the way you want. And again, it's a good exercise, it's a good practice. Maybe take that a little bit up that side. You can see how minimal you need to be on the darker areas to get the highlight up. Uh, whereas on the other, <clears throat> the brighter surfaces, you have to be a little bit broader and a little bit more purposeful with that. So we'll continue on as before and uh, we'll see what we have at the end of this step. So with the silver all done let's have a look around. I think it really shows more on the back. We get that sense of weight and that sense of highlighting and glinting far more in the darker areas than we do in the lighter areas but it's still present in the brighter spots. It still has a bit of a shine to it and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to quickly go over the black areas and we're going to use some Dark Reaper to do that. And it's just a case of picking out, uh, for example, just the, the ribbing on the armor joints and stuff like that. So just a little bit here and there. And this is mainly because it is a character figure. It's not um, something I would necessarily do on a lot of the standard troop models either. So from that point, we're going to, uh, let me see here. We need to highlight up the leather work because there's a, a fair bit of leather work, but there's also some gold that we need to work on. In fact, let's go with the gold first. And to highlight the gold on this guy, we're going to go with MIG um, acrylic metallic. Uh, which is just their brass. It's a very bright colour. Um, but still has that sort of pale gold uh, that we want uh, for the colour scheme. So again, it's going to be a case of getting some of it on my brush. 
this is a very thin paint because it it kind of likes to be uh, airbrushed on so we're going to be picking out just a few spots just to bring up that shine a little bit it's mostly on the skulls and some of the edges You can hopefully see that that's just brightening up the gold a little bit. And then up on his halo as well. We'll just do those spikes. Just anything that lets these colors stand out a bit more. Like so. We have a bit on here as well that we can use. So for example, we'll definitely take in these big flat pieces. just to bring them up a little bit too and make them have a bit of a shine to them. And do the back side of the halo as well. just to reinforce that that's quite bright and shiny. So not too much, just a bit here and there. And then we will do the leather and that will be enough. So we have this uh, Steel Legion drab that we've used and what we need to find now is, um, let me see here, probably almost a bone color, I think or a pale, a pale sort of brown. So, excuse me while I just sort of, no, nope. <laughs> I sort of just rummage through and pick something out here. Perhaps, perhaps we're thinking too much. And I think we're going to go with uh, Ushapti Bone for this one. And what I'm gonna do is put some on my brush and then remove most of it and just make it just a little bit of a of a line it's probably a little too bright And I lost the tip of the brush as well, which is kind of annoying. But that's all right. Because that's more or less all we're really looking to do there is just get a little bit of something going on there. And there's these pouches and this sword scabbard as well, but I think just the scabbard will do. Just a nice sharp line there on the scabbard. I think that helps. So we'll do a little bit of this as well on the purity seals. Use the side of the brush and just vertical stroke across the, the texture. One up on his arm there. And then we have these two. as well as the skull, we can brighten that up with a little bit of an overbrush on it. And then down the middle of a shield. Just to highlight that up a bit as well. Now, what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to take my black paint, I'm going to paint the, the base, and I'm also going to do a few little thin lines on his purity seals as well. And when we come back, that should be the miniature done, and we can have a look 
at uh, our final result. With the black all applied, uh, this is our Astral Knight uh, finished, basically. He's done to more or less the same standard as the, the previous batch, just uh, switching out a couple of uh, colours here and there, or doing things slightly different than what we did originally. And I like it. I like it a lot. I think he's easy to follow. I think if you have the time to use your um, use Army, pa Army Painter uh, Quickshade, you're going to get a very solid result. Now, let's compare him to what we had previously. So, one of our uh, Dark Imperium Marines. And you can see, yeah, there's a few differences. There's a few things we could change. But overall, he is going to fit in rather nicely uh, with... The, the older stuff, you know, the new stuff is going to fit nicely with the older stuff. He's a little brighter uh, than this guy, but I'm not too worried about that. I kind of like the, the look of the character being a little bit brighter than um, our standard guy here, uh, which is great. I can see that um, I more or less got the base color for the, the leather correct, but I, I didn't have or couldn't remember what the uh, highlight color was, but that's fine. I can change that on the rest of the box set as I go around. And... Again, the the highlighting method still works, and picking out picking out some highlights in the um, the darker areas really does help a lot. Um, because this guy's more of a standardized sort of a normal Primaris Marine or a standard Marine, I guess um, he is going to not look just as poppy as our uh, lieutenant here, which is absolutely fine. Because I think this guy needs to stand out and needs to look. A bit more important but anyway that's enough from me uh, please let me know in the comments what you think uh, I'll be glad to listen to all the feedback and take it on board probably a lot of get better at free handing and I was like yeah I really should maybe I should lay off the coffee a little bit more but anyway as always guys thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it and taken something away from it and um, yeah don't be scared if you're revisiting an army to try something new if the results are going to be a little bit quicker but very similar. So if you're looking to pick up an old army and revamp it a little bit as we move into the new edition of 40k as this time was uh, as this video was filmed, then uh, by all means do it and try a couple of new things and see how that works out for you. Anyway, take care. And I'll see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.